Caroline Flack, 40 years old. And in many ways, not that long ago, she had the world at her feet. I know nothing. I know no more than you do about any of this. So I can't sit here and tell you it was because of that or it was because of this. I do have some rather negative opinions, views, beliefs about the um, British tabloid media. But given that I wang on about those almost every day, I don't think today needs any, any special mention. The... The public narrative is is one of social media, at least as much as tabloid media. M my view on the tabloid media is 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 not new. We and I, I used to be a show business editor on on a national newspaper, albeit that I did so at a time and with an editor that allowed me not to indulge in the sort of excesses and abuses that are commonplace in the profession. I I'm going to be completely honest with you. That was luck, right? Had I been in the chain of command on a different newspaper under a different editor with the same personality and the same ambitions, I don't think I would ever have said, no, I'm not doing that. Um, on principle, not as a younger man, because I, I, I mean, you know, that is, all right, we'll find someone that will. And I'd have been back measuring inside legs by tea time, which is, you know, a little bit embarrassing, but I think it's very important to be honest. Uh, it's this, this sort of holier than thou position that that some media critics adopt is probably bogus i'm lucky that i didn't have to do the stuff that i would now feel soiled by but i don't think i would have had the financial security or the moral confidence to to say no so the stories and again i, I just briefly it going in on the tabloid tactics before we move on to other areas of caroline flack's tragic death um uh, the, the stories that used to make me snigger, but always with a slight sense of discomfort, profound discomfort. And, they'd, you know, you, you, you would get people almost boasting about doing a so-called death knock and trying to steal a photograph of the murdered child from the mantelpiece of the mourning family. Now, some of this might have been exaggeration. Some of it might have been embellished, but there will be a kernel of truth. And that was a kernel of truth that was present 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you could probably trace it back to when Rupert Murdoch bought the son and put a man called Larry Lamb in charge. That is really when things began to change and Rupert Murdoch realised how much money could be made from commoditizing to be kind, fetishizing to be a little less charitable, death and tragedy. And, and given that the story which actually turned Murdoch's head involved the murdered wife of his best friend. It's a particularly interesting period of British media history. But again, it's not necessarily what we should concern ourselves with today. What interests me is whether you, as a consumer of media, both traditional and social, think that anything profound has actually changed. And and I... I actually just want to know what you think that that will be question number one if you are i mean and also this is such a weird conversation to be having with regard to instagram instagram's quite nice right you don't get do you get bullied on instagram is there nastiness on instagram you do get nastiness on instagram forgive me my, my field of experience is confined exclusively to twitter on on facebook i'm only uh in in touch with people i already know twitter is very much part of what some people would laughably describe as a brand. Um, it, it, it's part of my job. It's, it's part of the platform that I use to, to get out there. And uh, you, you take the rough with the smooth on that. And you can, of course, walk away. I only discovered this morning that my friend Amanda Abington, the actress, is no longer on Twitter. I'd been wondering where, where she'd been. But given that her former husband or former partner is in the news talking, I think quite responsibly, if that's... Not an inappropriate word to use in this context. Talking quite responsibly about the fact that he's hit his children. Um, I, I thought I'd better see what Amanda's got to say about this. And then sort of re discovered or, or remembered that she's walked away, having previously been on it a, a lot. So you can always do that. And there's no point pretending otherwise. But it is a little bit... To me, at least, it's a little bit different from all that's gone before. Because it gives... A sort of loud hailer to people who I think most of us would be baffled, stroke, really troubled 
and concerned by if you are dedicating more than, what, two minutes of your day to trying to hurt people that you have never met because they happen to be, quotes, famous, end quotes, or quotes in the public eye, end quotes. There's nothing new about that impulse. There's, there's nothing new about that. It's probably close to an illness, isn't it? I mean, depending on how much time you're dedicating to it. But there's something about social media that has magnified phenomena that have long existed in a way that does to me as a former Fleet Street show business journalist and obviously now as a professional gob on a stick with half a million followers on social media it does feel a little bit different but my goodness me I, I, I mean to, to leap from that to the rather dangerous and irresponsible and directly contrary to the advice that the Samaritans give us when dealing with stories like this to, to claim that one single issue could have provoked an act like this is is not only highly unlikely but also highly irresponsible so the issue that intrigues me the most perhaps is anonymity i mean it shouldn't really bother anybody if they're getting jip from someone who hasn't got the confidence to put their own name on their own communication so i i mean it it, it shouldn't but I can prove to you that it does. If you received a death threat through the post this morning, you wouldn't really care whether it was signed or not, would you? So there is always an extreme I can reach for to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. If you received a note through your letterbox saying, ooh, I really hate you, you ugly mean man, um, it would probably hurt more if it was signed Doris at number 37 than it would if it was signed Doris 03467866662 or I don't know England's Rose or up the Christian West or something like that I mean there, there is something quite comical about anonymity up to the point where people actually get worried and you might be worried about an extant threat or, or I think in this case uh, the focus has been drawn to the question of mental fragility you know vulnerability and and I heard a clip from Mark Wright, who I think is famous for being on The Only Way is Essex, uh, uh, earlier in the, the, the morning. It was playing out on our own bulletins. That was quite, that actually m moved me a bit. I mean, it, it, I think having a Fleet Street background means when you get nonsense on social media, y you're almost proud of it. You know, the, the, the idea that people think you're this important is almost flattering. But if you come from a different background, if you come from a non-journalistic background... It must be really weird. And to hear him say it does actually hurt made me a little bit embarrassed, actually, because, you know, the giggles and laughs that you can have at people um, probably overlook the fact that other people might really get hurt by this stuff. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me is probably one of the biggest lies humanity has ever told itself, and yet we all sang that, didn't we, in the 1970s and the, and the 1980s.